Hello everyone, good afternoon. So today I'm going to cover FIFA World Cup match analysis using Python. So uh, let me start. Before starting Jupiter Nolbu, I would like to tell you something brief about myself, who I am, what I am doing. So uh, my name is Ayushi Sahu. I'm a senior developer at Accenture. Before that, I've, uh, I have worked with the Tata Consultancy Services. I have four plus years of experience in Python develop, uh, Python programming lang language. And beside that, I have also worked in a, uh, with web de development. I have worked with the automation projects using Selenium, Automation Anywhere. I'm a certified AWS developer and certified Automation Anywhere developer. I have, uh, I have also knowledge of uh, AWS Azure DevOps and SQL. So while in free time, I would I like to draw I like to draw, I like to sketch. These are uh, my favorite thing like dancing and sketching. So this is all about myself. Let's start. While starting uh, analysis. So let me tell you brief about what exactly is analysis we are going to do. What other categories or technologies we are going to use here? Okay. So are you excited? So today I'm going to cover uh, this EDA, types of EDA and EDA methods, and then hands-on uh, using Python, uh, Jupyter Notebook. So let me start with the exploratory data analysis. In this, uh, in a bookish language, I can uh, I can say process of examining and understanding the data and uh, in finding, extracting the useful information. But in a general language, we can say we have raw, raw data. And then we are, uh, if we want to use somewhere, we will uh, draw the patterns, we will find something you, and we will uh, find out our information. So data, this EDA we are going to use for the data cleaning and uh, data, we will draw the data patterns, we will find the outliers and then we will give this uh, whole, after cleaning everything, we will give this uh, notebook, I'm sorry, with uh, Excel to our machines for the prediction. So this is, uh, we are not going to do prediction here. We are going to just do the cleaning and visualizing data. Okay, so here we are, uh, so in this demo, I'm going to show you how to, uh, out, how to find the outliers, how to clean your data, how to uh, replace your missing values kind of things. Okay, so uh, in data analysis, what is happening we, uh, before that, we are going to use Python, but there are two languages we can use for analysis, which is R language and Python. So currently today I'm going to use Python and there I'm going to use a few libraries uh, like Seaborn, Mat Matplotlib, Plotty, uh, et cetera. Okay, so uh, types of exploratory data analysis, okay. So there are three types of analysis we can, um, three types of EDA. First is univariant. So what is univariant it like? Suppose you want to analyze the only salary over all the year. So you can use, uh, in this, we can say we, have, we, are find, we are getting the output from only the one variables or for, uh, from only the one, call, one variant. So that is called the univariant. So uh, because uh, there is no cost and effect because we are not going to depend on uh, any other uh, columns we are saying, only we are uh, going to use only one, okay? So that is why there is no cause and effect relationship at all. Example, I have, uh, as uh, I told you, we can find the salary over a year, that is a single column we are going to analyze, that is univariate. And for analyzing and we, uh, for the visualization, we are going to hist plot and box plot. There are a uh, num number of plots as well. Today I'm going to cover hist plot and box plot for the univariate. Okay, second thing is y variant. So uh, y variant is like if your output or if your uh, outcome is dependent on the two variable. Okay, suppose uh, for example, uh, if the if the temperature is increases gradually, likewise your sale will increase. Ice cream sale will increase. Okay, so it is uh, proportional. It is dependent on each other. Kind of we can say suppose the uh, temperature goes down, the sale will also go down. This relationship is known as the y variant. We are uh, for this finding this relationship. We are uh, considering that as a y variant. Okay, so analyzing this kind of data, we are going to use a scatter plot, hex plot, bivariant line plot. There are some other plots as well. Next thing is multivariant. 
okay so multivariant is like we have uh, we can analyze the multiple variables if your output is dependent on the multiple variables that is called the multivariant okay for example you need to calculate the salary but that salary column is dependent on uh, either you can say the department wise like finance it like it may be depend on the, your uh, your education as well like you are a graduate or a master you did or some doctorate kind of okay this second thing and one more thing it is dependent on your levels your are you in the junior level senior level or kind of things okay so these three will uh, these three will vary your salary column so these are these are called multivariant okay and type of uh, so visualizing multivariant we are going to use a pair plot scatter plot heat plot map plot kind of things okay and next is a method so we have first of all we have find out my uh, my output will be dependent of these columns like uh, univariant or multivariant or by bivariant now my question is how i am going to analyze uh, the part so there are two methods we can use a uh, numerical method and graphical method so uh, how we can uh, how we can think about that like how we will find uh, which method i need to use so suppose uh, suppose there is one principal and uh, 10 students are there and those are having this appointment with principal so if you if you want to find out the mean uh, if you want to find out the average time principal gave for this uh, these appointments so then you can use the numerical method like you can directly find the mean and you can get this if you want to visualize something like a salary which i mentioned so you can use the graphical methods like working with the simple variables working with the two variables working with the multiple variables and uh, for skewness also and for spread also we are going to use a numerical method so don't worry i'm going to cover all these methods in my uh, in today's notebook okay does anyone have any question till yet okay uh, let me start so how to perform eda so performing is like uh, first of all you have you have you should have your data okay suppose you are getting data from the web or some other places you should have data in the structure format to do analysis to do eda uh, eda okay so uh, data collection is like you are uh, you are getting anything in your csv or in your excel second part comes with the cleaning like you have raw data you have to you um, you have to do some other calculations you can't use with the null data right so for that perspective you have to clean you have to clean your missing values you have to remove your outliers those are not in range you have to remove the uh, suppose someone appeal form multiple times so you will get data multiple times so you have to remove the redundant variables kind of things then comes to co correlation suppose uh suppose there are a number of things okay a uh, number of variables how you will decide which way if i change something it will it impact to my other variables if yes then you have to find out the correlation okay next thing is visualization the very important thing is if you have data you have number of rows you can't decide what exactly my data looks like okay uh, you if you want to know the say, uh, sales okay so you can't uh, look into the table you can't uh, you can't say that uh, yeah my, my table uh, my sales is increase in this year or decrease in year in this year so for that perspective visualization is very important okay so let's start with our jupyter notebook let's get our uh, hands dirty okay so are you guys able to see my uh, jupyter notebook okay thank you so in jupyter notebook uh, okay let me start with the how you uh, how you will do analysis okay so for that perspective you have data you don't know what you need to find out correct so for that you have to first look into the data right here if you are doing a sample uh, sample if you want to uh, if you are a learner if you want to learn the things you have to find out the uh, uh, first of all the question out of the data you don't know suppose i am having this fifa world cup uh, this uh, notebook or oh, sorry fifa world cup workbook so my first question when i uh, when i read this line my first question will come so suppose you are having any data set uh, suppose you are having any workbook uh, like i am having the fifa when i think about fifa i don't know what is inside my workbook i don't know what exactly my data is just fifa okay this is this is uh, one of the match okay 
so there may be players there may be some scores there may be country there may be number of things related to this match okay so i can predict like that once i will go through i will write uh, write down your all the questions you're getting in but when you are doing some real world uh, you can say real world projects like i am currently working on some data science project so i am having one of the my problem like i am having what i need to do so for that i don't need to write the questions right so when you are doing practice you have to first of all uh, write down your questions what you are going to do what you are going to analyze uh, from your data sets okay now uh, i am using the python language uh, for this eda uh, analyzing and uh, one more thing yeah and i am going to use matplotlib seaborn and some other uh, uh, some other i can say this modules can numpy pandas okay so matplotlib and seaborn these are the two uh, very important for the visualization both are uh, almost similar and for seaborn uh, seaborn so that is the extended version we can say uh, it's standard version of the matplotlib okay i'm going to use both you will get to know so uh, we, we are using the pandas to read the excel uh, like our data and read and perform some calculations perform some cleaning part for that perspective okay next thing if you see i have written a uh, warning filter uh, filter warnings okay ignore filter warning that is i am using suppose we are you are having the number of data you you are getting some uh, some warnings like you you can't use this you don't do this kind of so i am just deprecating uh, warnings or ignoring uh, warning for that perspective i have used this module uh, warning i am importing this for, uh, warning okay next thing panda so panda if we, if i load my data you will get uh, data is loaded read csv my data is in the csv format if your data is in excel format you can write the read excel find out all the function you can get from the google easily okay next thing is you have suppose you have 10000s of rows and number of columns so how you will restrict your data to be limited so for that perspective we can use the set options i am going to display only my maximum row 200 and maximum uh, column 200 and width we are passing okay we are uh, it's just for limiting our data display data we are not limiting our data frame we are just uh, limiting the display part okay now uh, i i got my data loaded now how i uh, how i will found my, uh, what present inside my data like uh, in my workbook what kind of data is present so that's perspective you can just do the head if you will pass two it will return the two number of rows okay and if you will if you will not pass any value it will give you maximum five number of rows okay next thing if you see in my data i am having the team one team two positions number of goals and number of things like i am also not able to see because of number of columns are there if you see number of columns i right? so for that i have to find out how many how many rows are there and how many columns in my data set so if you they uh, if you do uh, df dot shape df is my data frame and shape we are going to uh, uh, shape we are using to go finding uh, finding out the rows and columns in my data sets current i know i got my number like i am having this much of rows i am having this much of columns okay now my thing uh, my uh, next uh, next thing is okay i got my rows what is present but how if i want to do something removing i want to do clean, cleaning for that perspective i should know my column names right if i want to do, uh, i want to perform anything i have to find out columns so for that perspective i have used a df columns and Uh, this is just a basic when we start any kind of data we have to do this kind of thing just to uh, see your data sets okay we are we, we can't open this number of excel if if it is bulky if it is large in size we can't go and check each columns and each rows right for that we can use directly these functions so uh, next thing is describe so this function will return your uh, all the if the if your data sets is having the numerical data okay numerical in nature for example in my uh, in my data sets i am having the number of goals in the numerical format number of team total attempts goal inside the penalties kind of number of so all these data when you use the describe it will return you the count mean standard minimum 25% and suppose uh, why this is required why we need to do df uh, describe okay 
So suppose you are you having some data number of words. Okay, you want to find out how many. Uh, as I said earlier, we can analyze the. We can. There are two methods like numerical one and graphical one. So you can consider this as a numerical because uh, if you if you want to find out the counts, if you want to uh, find out the average uh, mean like average average number of goals uh, for the team one, you can get directly from here. You don't need to do again any calculations or anything. You can directly get from this describe functions. Okay. Next thing is TF. This is very important. While you are analyzing, you should know information about your columns, like your column data types, your column counts, your whether it is containing null values or not null values, all the columns. So if you see in my uh, this df.info, it is it is showing me the columns, non-null count data types. Okay. And one more thing I want to show you when you uh, when you uh, when you do this, this cell df uh, df.info. It will not only give you the column, not null counts, and uh, D type, it will also show you the memory uses, which is very important. If you're having the large data sets, if you're having the large number, so this memory uses you have to keep in mind. This is a template. If you're learn, if you are in a learning system, no worries. When you work with the live project, so their memory is very important. It's a very critical thing because while loading, it takes much of time. Okay, it takes much of space. So we have to keep this in mind. How you will, uh, how you will uh, use the properly things to get this uh, memory uses reduced. Okay. So uh, okay. So this is all about. This is all the basic things. Now we can start with the R analysis. We have we did the data collection and all the basic stuff. Now our part is to clean the data so that we can use further for the visualization or further passing um, for passing anything. Okay. So. Uh, okay, now next thing is data cleaning. So while data cleaning, what exactly data cleaning means? So data cleaning means uh, we have to, uh, data cleaning means we have to convert a data type. Uh, we can, con uh, we have to convert data type. We have to check whether if suppose you are, uh, if you see before this, okay. If you see my screen here, uh, all the Positions also team name. This is team one, team uh, team two. All are in an object, so we can change this to string because we are not going to use the object. So to reduce the memory, we can we 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 need to change this data type. Okay, I will show you that in a proper way. Second thing is inspecting the missing value. If you're if you're having the missing value, you won't uh, you can't do any uh, any calculations. You can't say, apply any filters anything. For that you will get the null. Uh, you will get the value because you are getting the null value. So it is very important to inspect your missing values. Third is removing duplicates and removing unwanted columns. Okay, I will go through every one by one. Second, uh, okay. So if you, uh, I will show you again my date table. There is one date in row number seven. Okay, and if you see, there is sixty-four non-null count, sixty-four and non-null count. Okay, not non-null. If it is null, it will indicate here. So that is an object. I am going to use my date. Date should be in a date form. It should not be in an object form. Okay. So for that, because it won't, uh, when you do analysis or when you, uh, when you, uh, when you want to visualize the things, uh, that time you will get uh, some string problem or kind of thing. So if it is date, you you should have to convert this in a date format. Yeah. So first, uh, I I did the I have changed. I have used this to date function. I'm changing my uh, my ob my object date type to date function. Okay. Then I am checking. Yeah. I have changed my uh, date. Now my uh, point is how many objects I'm having because I have to figure out some of the strings is also, uh, if, if you see team one, all the strings are present. Okay. So for that perspective, why you need to use objects, correct? For that, you can use, uh, you can use directly string. I will tell you, I will show you one more thing why we are using this data conversion. Okay. And next, if you see, yeah. So we have converted. Uh, we have converted some of the objects. Like we, like we can. Uh, team one, we have included. Team two, positions. Position we can't do right now. We will do later when we analyze data. 
So as of now, we have converted these two. And if it is very body, yeah, if it is category, it should be not object. It should be come under category. Okay. Category is also one of the data type in this. And you can use the when you are when you are seeing there are suppose there you are uh, analyzing something where gender is present. Okay. Something education is present. When there are categories, you have to find out the categories. Okay, data type. And what is your data type and uh, like what kind of your data is so uh, before uh, like before we proceed further i will give you a brief about what kind of data you have to analyze so suppose this is a team okay first of all we are analyzing the structured data there we are having the numerical data and kind of uh, numerical is present or not you can see whether this is numerical or not you then you have to figure out whether my data is categorical categorical data or not so if you see in my data type this is category right so group a group b group c these all comes under the category if you and there are some more things like uh finding the ordinal value and nominal suppose okay my data my i got my category group a group b so will it will it impacting each other like group A, group B, we have in teams. Teams group A, if it is group A, group B, group C, it won't impact each other, right? So for that, we can say, yeah, this is not a, uh, this is nominal data. Suppose ordinal, uh, suppose you have something uh, like in a range, uh, for example, you did, for example, secondary education, higher education, then college, then uh, graduate, like then uh, graduation, then post graduation. These are in a order, right? So that comes under the ordinal. So while proceeding, while checking the data types, you have to uh, you have to first analyze your data. What kind of uh, data is you you having? Okay, according to that you apply. If it is categorical, change is to category. If it is if it is uh, object, check first whether it is a string or not. If it is a string, you can apply a string. You can convert that. Yeah. So if you if uh, I I did again, I have checked again what uh, what is my data type. For my team one, if you see team one is object, team two is object. Now I have changed the date. So it will come under the date time NS. Okay. If it is category, it will it is object. So we can change our uh, this thing. Okay. So uh, what I did is I have changed the team one to a string, team, uh, team two also to a string, category also to a string. Okay. This is I have applied. And if you see, okay. So as I have mentioned, the memory uses uh, one minute. Let me show you that again. Yeah. If you see my memory uses is 44.1 plus KB. Okay. 44.1 plus KB. Now let me, uh, now, now let us check whether my uh, memory is Im impacted or not when I change my data types. Okay. So if you see, I have uh, I have changed the I have replaced something to string and uh, converted into a. We are having the position team, correct? So that is I have con previously it was object. Now I have converted it to in. Likewise, I have converted the team one object to string. So now you can check my data type is from forty four point one plus to forty three point six. So this uh, conversion will impact your memory as well. So use accordingly what you have to use, what kind of data is present to save your memory. Okay. And to do analysis in a proper way. Second thing is uh, in inspecting the missing values. As I mentioned, if there is any null value, you can't proceed further. You can't, uh, you can't do any calculation. It will give you error because of null values. So uh, I am doing, I am just, if there is one function in null is null. I am checking whether there is null or not. I'm uh, I'm get I'm just counting, creating some. Uh, I'm just creating the uh, something like I'm getting the sum of that and then ascending order. I'm just uh, this is false, so it won't give you an ascending order. Okay, when I will run this, so it will give you in a zero zero zero. It means there is no null value. But what if there may be some zero point zero point something kind of? So for that, like. Uh, for that, we can also verify some of numbers having, uh, like, this is in a calculated way. Okay, so it might be possible there may be 0, 0.0 point something will be there. 
so for that we are again we are just uh, using the shape function and then we are dividing we are calculating in a percentage format okay so if you see my data there is everything is in a 0 0 0 0 means in my data i am not having any null values but what if in your data there might be any null values right so how you will handle the null values there are two ways to handle first of all you you can uh, you can directly delete okay if, you're, if that row is not impacting others, you can delete. But if it is, if it is a uh, crucial part of your data, it is, you can't directly remove because it is very important. So for that, what you will do, you have to do uh, the second thing, imputation. Imputation means you can replace your null values with the, either you can replace your null values with the mean, you can replace your null values with the median or mode, or you can replace with the constant currently, uh, or one more thing you can do, you can replace your value with the preceding values or the forwarded, which is you're having that value. Okay, so these kind of uh, like, like these, uh, these way you can use to handle your missing values. Okay, and then if some of them is having the sometime, uh, what happens, suppose there is, a, I will give you an example, suppose there is one form, okay. And that form, I filled that form. So I forgot to, uh, I, I filled, I forgot that I filled again, okay? If you're not getting any notification, uh, if you're not getting any notification. So in that case, you filled again. I filled again that form, okay? So when it will collect somewhere, so data will give the twice. Same information will be twice there. So uh, you ha it is very important to check the any duplicate it's present or not. So you need to remove the duplicates. So that we we having we are having one function drop uh, drop duplicates in pandas. Yeah, and uh, the last part of this data cleaning is remove unwanted columns. Uh, yeah. So if you if you if you know like uh, I am having this forty four eighty eight means I am having the sixty four rows eighty eight columns. I am not going to use the these all columns in my data sets, uh, in my analysis. Suppose uh, in my data, I have to find out how which countries perform very well in team one. So for that, I don't need uh, any other score. Uh, I don't need any attempts or I don't need any uh, number of things that go inside penalty, go outside penal penalties kind of thing. Group also I don't need because I need to find out top performing countries, right? So for that, those things which you not want, uh, which you're not going to use in your analysis, you can remove. It will first of all reduce your complexities to handling the data sets. But, and the second thing is it will enhance your analysis also. Okay. So you have to uh, like if you're if you're working if in uh, in your real project you will get something you have to do this and you saw that these columns are not wanted. Either you can remove it or you can handle properly. Okay. This is all about the data cleaning. So is there any questions? Yeah, I will uh, quote. Yeah, don't worry. I will share code with you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can C1 length is less than compared to Matplotlib? C1 length code? No, no, no. It's not like that. Okay. I will, uh, okay. I will cover all the queries at the end. So C1 is, uh, I will give the answer. C1 is the extended version of the matplotlib. You're having uh, some functions, suppose. I'm giving you an example of Python only. This is Python, uh, Python 2, Python 3, okay. So why Python 3? Some of the functions got added, correct? That is why. Uh, it is Python only, we are using the same code. We are, some functionality will got added. So uh, same here goes to here also. Something is changed. Some so uh, we are getting good functionality, good visualizations, good uh, good functionality. I will show you that also wait, in my notebook. Now I have completed my data collection, my data cleaning. It comes to my analysis. I got my data clean. I got my everything. Now my turn is to clean the data. And previously, uh, when I gave you the theory, uh, theoretical part, I explained you that time, I told you there are three types, okay? Three types of ADM, uh, univariant, y-variant, and multivariant. So I will show you one by one. 
yeah if you see this uh, figure okay so if you if you see i am uh, my first question i wrote is how many groups are there i am having match so there must be group yeah we saw in category we have group a group b so my question is if there is a group how many groups are there if there is a if suppose there are seven groups so how many teams present inside that group so we are going to use only one column that is group category column okay if you can see in my code i have used only one category column means for my output for my outcomes i am only using the one variant right which is category i am only going to use my one column okay so for that uh, so for that we have used a category and this will comes under the univariant okay so because we are using the one variant to finding our uh, to analyzing to finding our outcomes so when you see this is a bar plot okay bar plot i am using the i am using the column category it is displaying as a category category a b c d okay and uh, if you see this numbers it means how many teams are present inside that number so i will show you if it is a final final you can see uh, means uh, if you see the one means one from team one one from team two likewise if you are seeing the group a six means group a containing six means from team one six members from team two six members kind of if it is roll of 16 means eight members from the team one eight members from the team two okay so this is uh, my univariant analysis and now uh, i can uh, yeah i got my this thing like a b c d now my uh, next question is team 1 and we are having team 2 we are having so how many unique country, like how many countries are there uniquely suppose india played in some match he uh, qualified in uh, he qualified in the first group a qualified group a and then uh, he goes to uh, quarter final semi final final so it played i think four to five times so we are finding out the unique one okay yeah next thing is uh, yeah as i mentioned this other thing is uh, showing the how many countries participated in my fifa world cup match let's talk about this is a univariant i as i mentioned these are the 13 categories and inside that we are having the number of teams present then second thing is okay now my second uh, univariant is completed now my, my second and uh, second type is multi uh, sorry, bivariant so bivariant is like we are using the two columns to predict uh, to find out my outcomes okay so i want to know which team played against which team suppose in a uh, sub category wise so in my category suppose first match happened and that uh, that is uh, from the group a so i want to know from group a which team played against which team so uh, for that perspective i have used the line line plot to check which country played against which country and there's one uh, one important function is there which is hue hue is like uh, suppose there, uh, i will give you in a short example there's a gender okay so uh, male and female you want to calculate something so it will give you the hue will give you distinct value it will uh, it will differentiate for you okay if you apply see if i will not apply if you can see this okay yeah if will if if i will not apply it then it will it will give me like that uh, directly like this are you able to see this this is in a single in a single way i'm not able to find out exactly right so i'm not able to see which uh they are are they from which category like are they from group a group b or the final ones or what so for that uh hugh comes in the picture and hugh uh, explain us in a proper way he tells us that uh, yes we have there are uh, some matches and he divides you uh, he divides our data in a proper category in a proper display if you see group a each is having the different colors also for the good visual uh, for the good visualization and yeah two more thing is uh, if you see set set figure width and this okay height and width so i am i have like if you plot anything it will give you a default pick size so if you want to increase your uh, picture size you can increase okay you can either increase the height width it's depend on you there are number of functions so this is about uh, as i mentioned that is a bivariant because we are using the two thing secondly i have also analyzed the same is uh, this plot is also same but 
here i am using the hue as per my date so for example i i am having number of teams i am having number of groups how i will uh, i uh, if i want to analyze that yeah you have to check which uh, which match happen on which date okay suppose uh, for example if you see this yeah i'm having the this yeah suppose england uh, play uh, like yeah played against france on which date so you can you can just check with this and you can go to color you can get okay this is 2022 this is 1209 you can figure out directly so you is very important while you considering uh, you have to divide your data in a category kind of i have analyzed uh, i have analyzed my data yeah basic things like how many teams are there how many uh, how many teams are there how many countries are there which played against which team which team plays against which team on which day okay now there are uh, suppose uh, we are having number of groups so here i am only going to analyze uh, group a because of time constraint and i will also analyze uh, some few things like if i'm having the team one if i'm in the team two so there we need to find out how many goals are there some basic information for that you can uh, you can directly create a small uh, you can directly create a one data frame out of the large one so for your small analysis correct for if you want to do um, if you want to if you are having a large number data sets you want to do three four things so you can create a small small data frame so it will uh, it will not impact your main data frame as well as it will give you a flexibility to do anything in your small part yeah so here i have used uh, so i want to see my team one data okay so there i have like uh, how many goals are there yellow cards count kind of things so i have anal i have just copied the few team one information and in a new data, data sets and i am going to analyze it so i in my team one i am having this much of countries and uh, position team number of goals all the uh, all the required information for which is related to team one got in saved in my one data frame okay okay so now uh, bar plot as i mentioned we are having this bar plot we, i am going to analyze how many uh, like i am i know how many teams are present okay but next thing is uh, this team how many goals are done by my team so for that you can use bar plot i have if you see these are the countries okay countries and uh, the number england five okay so it, uh, number of goals done by england is five total number of counts yeah likewise i have analyzed for team 2 i won't uh, explain the repetitive things i will uh, show you the unique one okay this is i done for the team 2 like i have analyzed number of goals yeah one more thing is if you see these black lines okay so you thought why it is black lines in most of the bar charts we only used to see no, like this correct like the this uh, two things second one and third one we used to get this thing so why this is uh, why this is showing so for that perspective there is ci there is one function kind of you can say you can implement that and you can remove this if you want okay it will also give you the correct one it is kind of just to uh, ci is that function just pass the ci equal to none it will remove your black i haven't removed because it is for me it is looking little good so that's why it is giving good information that's why i haven't removed but that is considered as a error function kind of okay yeah next thing is i want to show you one very uh, good example okay so this i have team one okay team one and there are suppose in for example india india played uh, for group a he won then he played semi final he won that he played sorry quarter final semi final so number of time india uh, for example india played four times so i am analyzing i saw my data i am analyzing yeah how many countries uh, got a chance to play uh, play more than once kind of so if you see my data i have used here bar h plot so bar plot means you will get the in a vertical way when you pass bar h h means horizontal so your bar uh, con converted into the horizontal you see these are the countries and it is in a horizontal these are the counts means if you see this argentina it played five times maximum okay and when you see the final one also you will get this argentina name because this is this country played five times 
So if you want to do something, a univariant analysis in a way you have to calculate some pound. So you can also use this kind of plot bar, plot bar, edge plot, and there are some others histo histogram kind of, yeah. Next thing is uh, number of match play by we have completed. I have also plot for the my yellow card. I'm having yellow card. I'm having a uh, number of attempts. So for that, I have created one line plot, which I have already explained the line plot. And uh, one more thing I want to show you is like uh, we can there are number of functionality. So if you see this labels, right? Left, uh, if you see this total attempts, you can pass labels, you can change color of your line, you can change type of your line also like dotted or strong line, there are a number of functionality you will get under uh, under the seaborne, okay. Yeah, here I'm here, seaborne I have used. Now, it, uh, now very important thing comes. I, we, have, we have completed our almost analysis, like what we have to find out. We have used the line plot. We have used, uh, uh, you have, we have used some, uh, everything. So very important thing, how you will find now your, uh, your, uh, your uh, data is having the outliers. Your data is having some not, not normal distribution. So how you will get, okay. So I have used some uh, few columns there. I will show you, yeah. One before that, I would like to show you one plot which is box and plot. Box and plot is a uh, yeah, extended version of you can say box plot. So in box plot, you will get the quartiles, quartile one, quartile median in a, in a box format. But in this, you will get in a if you see because of my data is not uh, really good, so I am getting these lines. But if your data is very really good, you will get this kind of structure. So the spirit is uh, you can see the spirit in a proper way okay in this plot and i have used a hue function to uh, to distinguish between the categories yeah now i will show you very important thing is uh, how to uh, find out your outliers how to check whether you're uh, whether you're having the outliers or not so if you see uh, there is uh, i have analyzed the team well number of goals i have analyzed the yellow cards and I draw the box plot. So if you see the number, only this number, number of goals team one, number of goals team two, number of, I'm comparing the goals in team one, team two, yellow card team one, yellow card team two. So if you see there is one outlier, okay, in the zero means outlier is not uh, something very big. It's just in, suppose you're having, for example, uh, you're having team 10 team members, okay, in your team, but there is one manager. That is also you can, uh, when we analyze data, we can consider that as an outlier, but that will consider as a true outlier because that is a person, okay, that is not extent from them. It's just that its designation is different. So it doesn't mean it is a, uh, you can remove that part, you can remove that row. So likewise here also happened. This is a true outliers in my team. Some of, uh, so my team goal is zero, no problem. That is true outlier. So handling outlier is like if you're having, if you're uh, having something which, uh, some outlier which really impacting your um, analysis, which really impact your uh, machine. Suppose you want to pass this data, clean data to somewhere. So it will impact your uh, machines. It will give you a wrong error. So for that perspective, you can remove your outliers also. And not only remove, some, some of the rows are very critical. You can directly remove in a big data sets, okay? So for that, you can either replace, you can um, you can replace also. So there are a number of methods you can do. Since uh, my outlier is true outlier, there are two things, true outliers, for, uh, false outliers. It comes under, my, uh, this box comes under the true outliers. Hence, I'm not, I have just checked which line is giving uh, me the outlier. I haven't, I, I haven't removed it. I am not going to do a replacement also. So you, while seeing this box plot, Box plot is basically used for the scatter plot and box plot. These two are very important. These are used to handle your outliers. Okay, how your data is skewed, how we, uh, how the spirit happened. Okay, this is all about the handling outliers. Second thing is uh, okay. Second thing is uh, handling the distributions. Now in my data sets, there are some continuous uh, continuous number kind of. So uh, when you want to uh, see the when you want to see the distribution, you can use the this, this plot. This plot is like uh, you can only use the, the continuous one. When you're having the continuous value in your column, then you can use and you can check the this plot. 
So I will show you if you see uh, my data, this is not distributed properly. See, this is having the right tail is long here. Also, right tail is long. Likewise, I'm having the right. This is quite lit, lit, uh, little good also, but this is still having the uh, right tail. OK, so when comes when we are saying that, yes, we, I'm having I'm, my distribution is not good. Like before that, why you want to do your uh, why you want to check this? Why you want to check your uh, distribution is normal or not? So uh, I said earlier, this is very important for the uh, machines. If you want to pass your data or if you want uh, your result to be correct, zero error, then you, your data should have the normal distributions. Okay. So how, how we can change this to normal? This is not normal distribution. This is a uh, right skewed data, we can say, because this is a uh, skewed little right. Like this is a positive uh, side and the, uh, it is having the right tail long. Now uh, you want to, uh, you want, yeah, you got this from the information from the his plot, but you want to, uh, this is the graphical way, okay? You can use the numerical way also to get the skewness. So here I have used the, I have also used the skew function to get my data, uh, to get all the skewness of my data. This is a numerical method. The above of this plot is my graphical method. So if you see, it should be zero, right? Skew means we are, if, we, uh, if the normal distribution means mean median mode is having uh, present in, in a middle, okay? We are not get, uh, having any skew value, it should be zero. But if you see my data that is containing 1.31, 1.9 1.26, okay? So like, so for that, I, we have to remove, we have to do something, right? For that, we have to handle my skewness. So what I did is I have just used the NP, NP is a NumPy, there's one library to convert my data this in a log format. And when I convert it, oh, sorry, this one, yeah. When I convert my data, uh, I, I, if you're able to see this uh, 0 0.4, 0 0.17, 0 0.18, mean, one, uh, to do, means my skewness got changed, converted from one to zero. Now my data is quite better than previous. And now this is quite better. Okay, 0 0.4, 0 0.17, this is in a range. And this is 1.5, previously it was 1.8 or 1.9. So this is also giving good result, okay? You can also again the plot, uh, again plot. And if you see, this is quite normal. Uh, it comes under the normal distribution. It's quite good as compared to previous one. And this also, since it is having the 1.1, so it is, it, it is little skewed, but okay. And this is the third one, if you see, uh, properly normal distributed 0 0.1 i think 0 0.1 uh, or 17 so like this way you can handle your uh, you can handle your skewness you can check whether my data lie under the no uh, normal distribution or not and yeah so for that uh, for handling the outliers for sorry for handling this skewness we can use the log transformation which i showed you you can either use the square root transform, you can use a box cost transform. You can get, uh, you can use these kind of methods, okay? Now, other thing is, uh, next thing is, I have I, I have used uh, almost all the famous plots we can, uh, general, like general using plot. So previously I showed you line plot, scatter plot. Likewise, this is the pie plot. So it is giving, I am, I am, uh, I am just uh, highlight, uh, like I'm just, uh, I want to display my goal prevention for the team one. So I am using this and in a normalized form, if you see the six, nine, you can either change also. Okay. So this is my pie plot. Oh, uh, sorry. This is my pie chart. I have used to uh, highlight, uh, display my goal prevention team one. Likewise, I did for the team two. And yeah, very, uh, next is very important. Suppose you're having the sales. Okay, sorry. Suppose you're having the salary account. Salary column and which varies on uh, which depends on the number of things, number of other columns like your um, you can say like departments, like your education, like your levels. So this these three things imp can impact your uh, your salary, right? So for that you have to find out the correlation. Suppose in future you want to suppose uh, if you promoted to something uh, level uh, some other level, so it will impact your salary, correct? So these are dependent on each other. Same way we can find if you want to change something, will it depend on, will it impact my other variables? 
like you will uh, for example if you change any values if it is impacting your other thing then you can't replace you can't remove it right likewise uh, for that perspective we have to find out the correlation if i want to uh, if i want to change something will it impact my other values or not so you can find the correlations either by the heat map if you uh, and how to read heat map okay either you can use this heat map or there uh, there are some more pair plots also there are number of plots you can use so here how to read this heat map if you see this total number of attempts and uh, yeah, you can you can check total number of attempts is there and the goals are here see team goals team one so you can uh, you can check this is negatively uh, correlated kind of and you can vary the whether my uh, values are correlated with each other or not in a good strongly positively correlated or not uh, negatively correlated okay so if you are having this 0.4 it it is also quite good not much but yeah it's still correlated if you are having some value 0.98 it, it 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 means it is strongly correlated like one uh, near one it is showing dark colors so you can get yeah this is highly correlated which column is this number of goals team one and the third one is yeah uh, goal inside penalty so these are uh, ha much highly correlated likewise you can uh, you can check the highly correlation between this negative correlation no correlation this is the one method you can use i have also this is for the team two and i have also used a pair plot so in pair plots as i mentioned it is also used to find out it is also we can use to find out the correlation so if you see these things like single line in a in a straight we can say so that consider as a positively correlated and if you see this okay there is no correlation between this number of goals and the uh, the thing present inside the second one which is yeah total number of attempts there is no uh, such correlation means little correlation but not much highly correlated so likewise you can find your correlation with the heat map scatter or a uh, scatter plot this is a scatter plot uh, sorry it, it is a pair plot likewise there is one more scatter plot where you will get this kind uh, these dots only the same kind of pair plot means we are uh, pair, we are plotting we are like we are uh, yeah we are creating a correlation between multiples okay in a scatter plot you can you can also uh, find the correlation between two variables or multiple also we can use that also okay yeah one more thing i want to cover we have very less time okay this line plot so i have used a category team 1 team 2 and i just plot my uh, i have used this and plot my we can plot two uh, we can plot two things like i have used the final category also if you see uh, yeah final category also team 1 also and team 2 also okay so you can highlight you can check with this uh, now you can highlight with your different colors okay and i did the same thing yeah and the same as i have already covered this box plot and his plot yeah okay bar plot also i have covered yeah you can go through this notebook you can check i have uh, i have find out the multiples uh, yeah i have find out the multiple questions so i have already covered this but okay so i have almost completed number of plots multivariate bivariate everything so next thing is this is all uh, this is all about my today's notebook does anyone have any questions yeah you can go through my uh, you can go through my notebook you will get number of questions you can find out the methods also you i have used the number of things like i have used some different functions i have uh, if i am using the line plot i have used in a uh, sometime i have used different color sometime i have used different lines kinds so of you will get in my notebook so any questions okay let me go one by one yeah definitely i am going to share the notebook with you guys don't worry someone told me my friend don't let friends use spy chart okay it's totally depend it's totally your choice i have shown you because just you will get the information i am going to teach you that's for uh, for that point of view i have used a pie chart in mostly in my currently live project i am currently using the line plots so the table is there and line plots is there so i am using that it it's totally depend your uh, on your uh, like on your project 
okay and then is uh, outliers plus 3 standard deviation is an outlier i don't think this is a question so, yeah using z score is also you can see yeah so there is one more thing you can use the z uh, z score that is very important yeah you can you can directly do calculation like you can find out your uh, this thing quartiles and you can get the your uh, values also okay how to select the plot and charts for the data visualization as i mentioned if you are going to do the single um, single variable then you can go for a uh, bar plot kind of things there are i have mentioned everything in my notebook like if you are if you want to analyze your two variables you can use uh, you can use the line chart likewise you can see in the notebook also okay any other questions iqr to remove yeah that definitely iqr that's what i'm saying iqr is quartile level okay so uh, if you're in a in your box plot we can use uh, we can find out the first quartile and the third quartile and then we can calculate and we can uh, replace our value we can remove our uh, our outlier basis of this our iqr since my outlier was a two one, that's why I haven't removed. If you are get, if you are uh, some in some data sets, what happened? If some uh, human error comes, that can, that is also considered as an outlier. So that will consider as a false outlier. Okay, and the one which already having uh, this, the example which I gave you, the ten team members and ben, one manager, that is not considered as an outlier. Like that is outlier, but that is considered as a two outlier. So we can't remove it or we can't replace it. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Please conduct uh, sessions on the IPL data. Yeah, definitely I will do that. Don't worry. Yeah. Any other questions, guys? Okay. I think, yeah, it's completed. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone, okay. for joining my session.